five things that nobody tells you about for your first bodybuilding prep. Here we go, here we go. I do remember my first bodybuilding prep. It was 21 years ago, so it was quite a while ago, but I've been lucky enough, fortunate enough to work with many people through their first time competing and their first time prep. And these are some things that come up time and time again. Maybe they're, they're surprised by how they feel or you know the overall direction that life takes them while they're prepping for a bodybuilding show for the first time. But here we go, five things that nobody tells you for your first bodybuilding prep. First up, low energy availability. Now, what is energy availability? If we think of um, the overall calorie balance or energy balance, energy in versus energy out, it's a bit different to energy availability. Energy availability, how much energy do I have left over after I've trained? And whatever, whatever that amount of energy is that I have left over, every physiological process in my body is going to rely on that amount of energy. Everything from uh, just my, my overall energy levels for the day, um, the quality of my sleep, my cognitive function, mental health, hormone production, bone mineral density, uh, immune function, and one of the, the classic symptoms when someone is running low energy availability, so after they've trained, after they've taken out of the, after they've taken the calories from their training out of their total daily energy intake, whatever's left over, if it's a low amount, um, if it's within a certain range, it could be considered as low energy availability. And we're gonna see that fatigue kicks in. And fatigue's probably the number one thing during a contest prep that most people are surprised by, their lack of energy. Think about it, you're in a calorie deficit, you're doing a large amount of physical work, you know, your resistance training, your, your cardio, um, body fat levels are coming down, you're probably not sleeping as well as what you normally do, uh, you're probably very excited about the bodybuilding show coming up, you've got to work, and your energy levels just absolutely plummet. And we do often see uh, the result of the very low energy availability is that your NEAT drops. So your NEAT is your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. All of those non-deliberate movements that you do on a daily basis without even realizing. So as I'm talking and waving my hands around to you, that would be part of my neat, my posture, sitting up straight in, compared to say crouching over or bending over or slouching over. Um, you know, say you're on the phone to someone and you're talking to them and you're walking around and you don't even realize you're talking to them. That will all contribute to your neat. And when you have very low energy availability, your NEAT also tends to be very low and the overall result is that if you're not training or you're not at work or you're not doing some posing, you're probably sitting on the lounge not doing too much at all because you don't have any energy and that's your body's way of conserving energy. One of the ways, it drops your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis or all of those uh, non-deliberate movements that occur on a daily basis without you realizing. One of the other problems that nobody tells you about with a bodybuilding prep most people will say that their sleep is terrible. Not sleeping. Uh, the quality of the sleep, the duration of the sleep, it tends to go downhill very, very quickly. And again, part of that can be related to low energy availability. Part of that can be related to an increase of cortisol and stress hormones. Part of that can be related to um, taking in a lot of caffeine during a contest prep. A lot of people love high caffeine during a contest prep, I do. Gives you plenty of energy, helps you to train the house down, might uh, cause you to use a little bit more energy throughout the day as well. So caffeine is something that a lot of people use, but that can affect sleep. Hunger pains during the night, that can certainly affect sleep. Can't sleep because my stomach is rumbling or I'm excited at 5 a.m. in the morning because at 6 a.m. when my alarm clock goes off, I get breakfast and I'm so hungry. And so sleep can go downhill very, very quickly in a contest prep and you can find that the quality of your sleep deteriorates as well as the time that you actually get to sleep each night. Next up, persistent hunger. I know this one sounds like a bit of a no brainer and people will be like, well, of course you're gonna be hungry in a contest prep and that's something that you would, you would expect. But you probably don't realize how hungry you will get. You, you get this new appreciation of food. You start to do all weird sorts of things with food. I know that during contest preps, I have sat people down, family and friends, I've pulled out a cheesecake shop menu and I've made them pick out their three favorite cheesecakes and give them the reason why. You do all sorts of weird stuff when you're in a contest prep when it uh, comes to food, daydreaming and cravings and 
you know, you're wishing for food that you've never even liked before, but you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go crazy on this after my prep. You know, one thing that a lot of people do during a contest prep, they buy protein bars. They're like, oh, this flavor protein bar looks delicious. I'd love to be eating that. When I finish this contest prep, I'm just having all my protein from protein bars. And you go and buy 20 boxes of protein bars, and then you finish your contest, and you realize you can just have a chocolate bar instead of a protein bar, and you don't end up eating the protein bars. But weird stuff happens with hunger. Hunger can be like a 10 out of 10. The best contest preps that I've ever had, or I've ever been able to, to complete, um, They've been the ones where I haven't been focused on food. So hunger's been super high, but instead of daydreaming about the food, I've just stayed focused on the task at hand. You know, I'm just, I'm doing this because I want to be in the best shape of my life. I want to perform well on the bodybuilding stage. And overall, subjectively, I've got to say, it has felt like that, those preps have been easier without the daydreaming of food. Doesn't take away from the hunger, but I guess it's what you do with that hunger that, that counts. Um, the fourth thing that no one really tells you when you're going in a bodybuilding comp is the self-doubt that's going to creep in. And there's a lot of self-doubt. Am I going to be big enough to get up on that bodybuilding stage? Am I going to be lean enough? Is my posing going to be good enough? How's my shape and my symmetry? And am I going to forget how to pose on stage? There's a lot of self-doubt that creeps in and you can have a lot of negative self-talk that can, that can build up. And, you know, especially as you move through the early stages of the prep where you tend to go through the skinny fat stages. So what's the skinny fat stage? You enter a calorie deficit, so maybe um, your calories and your nutrition have dropped, or maybe the amount of work that you're doing increases. Maybe it's both, but either way, you're in a calorie deficit. And you tend to see that your muscle glycogen stores can be a little bit up and down. Muscle glycogen is that readily available form of energy that's easily utilized for activities like resistance training. And for every one gram of muscle glycogen, you hold another three to four grams of water. And so when you're in a calorie deficit, you can see that muscle glycogen drop down. You can drop a bit of water from inside the muscles. So it looks like your muscles have almost deflated. It looks like they've almost shrunk in size overnight. Body fat can't move as quickly. And so in a very short period of time, when you start a contest prep, it can look like you've lost lean muscle mass and it looks like your body fat is standing out even more. That's not the case. You've just dropped a bit of muscle glycogen. You've dropped a bit of that water volume from inside the muscles, body fat can't move as quickly. The overall effect is it looks like your muscles have shrunk, body fat standing out more, and you're in the skinny fat stage. And that's always, or well, that's a hallmark of a contest prep early on. I'll tell you what, that can destroy self-confidence very, very quickly. Finally, difficulty in posing. Posing can be very difficult. I mean, just to learn the movement patterns and learn the poses, there's a muscle memory component involved with that, just like any physical skill. You don't know what you don't know. So learning something new, there is a pretty sharp learning curve. And being able to transition between poses and not have to you know, overly think about it so you're really concentrating and you're sort of frowning and you're posing, like you want to relax, you want to be able to just pose and make it look natural and be able to flow and make it look like it's free-flowing. Something else that makes posing difficult is posing is a series of isometric contractions. So it's a muscle contraction, but there's no change in length of the actual muscle itself. And when you do a number of these isometric contractions back to back, especially when you're trying to pose um, in front of judges, and so you want everything that's facing the judge to be rock hard and you're flexing it, it takes up a lot of energy. And there's a fitness level or a fitness component involved with that. And you can get the shakes because the muscle fibers aren't firing off at the same time. And you start to sweat and you, you, you struggle breathing because you get out of breath and then you can't hold your midsection tight and you're thinking about the posing and it looks awkward. And so posing and learning how to pose can be something that is often overlooked for your first bodybuilding comp. So there's a few things to think about if you are thinking about competing. I'm not trying to talk you out of it. It's just it's often it's not spoken about low energy availability and the effects of that low energy availability sleep problems persistent hunger self-doubt difficulty in posing welcome to your first bodybuilding prep thought i'd give you a rundown listen if you're liking this content please like and subscribe it'll help the channel grow and i'll talk to you all soon